Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to this online sermon here at First United Methodist Church of Laporte. I'm Kevin Gilmore. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. I'm so glad you've chosen to watch today. We are beginning a brand new sermon series called Family Reunion, where we are taking a look at all of the characters that uh, have contributed to the great family of God. And so I hope you will uh, stick around throughout the summer as we have a bunch of different speakers who are going to share uh, their favorite family member from the family of God. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, God bless. Adam was the first man. We're remembering three of his children. Cain, Abel, and Seth. Three dots indicate that there are several generations between Seth and our next main character, Noah. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. The Canaanites were descendants of Ham, and the Europeans were descendants of Japheth. But the Bible follows Shem. Again, Let's use three dots to indicate several more generations before our next main character, Abraham. We're remembering the first two of Abraham's sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael became the father of the Arab people, and Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau became the father of the Edomites, and Jacob became the father of the people of Israel. Jacob had 12 sons, but we're only going to remember four. Judah, Levi, Joseph, and Benjamin. Moses and Aaron were of the tribe of Levi. Saul, the first king of Israel, was a Benjamite. And David, the second king of Israel, was of the tribe of Judah. Of course, his son Solomon was also of the tribe of Judah. And from that kingly line comes our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Let us pray. And now, God, may your word be proclaimed, either through me, or in spite of me. In Jesus' name, amen. When God made you, and when God made me, God made us a part of a family. God gave us grandmas and grandpas and sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and lots and lots of others. For when God made you and when God made me, God made us as a part of a family. When Jesus spoke of family, he extended it far beyond bloodlines and DNA. He called the entire Christian community a family. He called it the family of God. And so I want to use that metaphor to call us together for the summer today. The church is the family of God. And this summer we're going to have a big old, great big old family reunion. Matthew 12, 49 and 50, Jesus says, And pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. We are family. Jesus, point blank, we are his family. When we do the will of our Heavenly Father, we are family. We are united as family in Jesus. And as we gather for our family reunion, I, I want to talk about, as we begin, as we kick off this series, I want to talk about three ways that we are family. And so the first is that we belong to the same parent. Paul says in Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. When she turned 21 years old, Tammy Harris from Roanoke, Virginia, began searching for her biological mother. After a year, she had not succeeded. 
What she didn't know was that her mother, Joyce Schultz, had been trying to locate her for the last 20 years. According to the Associated Press news article I read, there was one more thing that Tammy didn't know. Her mother was one of her co-workers at the convenience store where she worked. One day, Joyce overheard Tammy talking with another co-worker about trying to find her mother. Soon they were comparing stories and comparing birth certificates and they discovered that they were mother and daughter, having been working side by side for several years. When Joyce and Tammy discovered that they were in fact mother and daughter, they fell into each other's arms and held on for the longest time. We have a heavenly parent. Whether or not it is clear to us, we have been searching for him all of our lives. Beware, your heavenly father is closer than you think. You could be working with him. <laughs> Embrace him, claim him, come to your family, claim the family of God. You know, what I enjoy most about baptism is its symbolism of claiming. In the sacrament of baptism, God is saying, this one is mine. This one is mine. Handle her with care. Treat him as you might treat me. Oh, I, I know critics will tell us that babies don't know what's going on. They don't understand what's happening. Why do it then? We do it because in that moment, we are claimed by God. And whether or not it is clear to us, God has chosen us in that moment. As we put that water on that baby's head, God claims that child in baptism, God chooses us. As we get older and mature in our understanding of faith and God, we have an opportunity to then choose him. We saw that a couple of weeks ago with our confirmation class. We are family. We are family because we have a common parent who has chosen us. Two, we live in the same household. Ephesians 2.19 so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. We all need a place, don't we? We all need a place. We need somewhere to belong. Every psychologist, every therapist, every theo theologian, uh, you name it, they will all tell you that we need grounding. We need somewhere to be. Uh, we need a place to call home. Now, even though it's technically not true, I understand our tendency to use a personal possessive pronoun to dis describe church places, right? You know what I'm talking about? This is my church. This is my Sunday school class. This is my pew. This is my parking space. Did you know that in some churches, members will even ask the guests move because they are sitting in my pew. Uh, not here, right? That doesn't happen here. That only happens in other churches. You know, families are strange and wonderful and dangerous things. Family creates our greatest potential for love and our greatest possibility for conflict. There's nothing like family coming to your aid in a time of need. However, nobody can hurt you more than a member of your own family. As a family of God, we are called to share the same household. In 2010, my family moved to Buffalo, Texas, moved from Buffalo, Texas to Hockley, Texas, for me to assume a new pastorate. It was not an easy move in that it was the first move where my oldest daughter, Savannah, really understood what was happening. When the move was first mentioned, all everyone was cool about the whole thing. We're getting closer back to Houston. But after a couple of months, she realized she was leaving the first real home she had ever known. And all her friends and her school. In the move, she had lost her place to be. We all need a place to be. About six months ago, we all started a renovation project here in the church. And in that time, we've already been able to repair three different roofs, reseal the windows in the sanctuary. As the months move along, we are going to need to temporarily displace some of your 
connection groups in order to complete some other renovations. We will eventually need to move from uh, the sanctuary temporarily as it's painted and reupholstered and recarpeted. I want to thank all of our all in committee members, our chairs, the Clausens and the Bones for, for leading us so well in that campaign. Uh, uh, thank you uh, to our board of stewards, Jerry Dennis, our board chair, for leading us and pushing us along. To all of us who will be asked to, to move over, to double up, to change, adapt, adjust, I say just hang on. This too shall pass. In the meantime, remember we are a family. We are a family of God. And let's be the best family that we can be. We belong to the same parent. We live in the same household. And then three, we eat at the same table. 1 Corinthians 10, 17. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. You know, maybe we are never more family than when we gather at the table for the sacrament of Holy Communion. Will Willimon, in his book, Sunday Dinner, says, Some of my fondest memories are Sunday dinner at my grandfather's big rambling house where we all gathered after church. Family meant more than mother and father and sisters and brothers. Family included an army of cousins and aunts and uncles and a host of passerbys whose relationship to the clan was less clear. Because of this Sunday mealtime ritual, he says, no one had to tell me what it meant to be part of the family. No one had to explain to me what it, what it meant to be belonged or that I was loved. I never needed formal instructions in orthodox belief or behavior. I learned all of that at my grandmother's dinner table. At the table we were initiated, he says, nurtured and claimed into the family. There we participated in common memory and fellowship and identity. There at the table we found our place, our name, our story. You know, many of us had the same or, or a similar experience. My family gathered many a day at my grandmother's table. It was a place where all were welcome. There was always enough food and enough joy and laughter for everyone. The church gathers at the table too. We call it the Lord's Supper, Communion, the Holy Communion, the Great Thanksgiving, the Last Supper, the Holy Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament, you name it. We call it lots of different things. By whatever name we call it, it is the church's family meal. In our tradition, United Methodist tradition, all are welcome. All people are welcome at this table. As Charles Wesley said in the hymn we sang uh, in worship today, come sinners to the gospel feast. Let every soul be Jesus' guest. Mm, what powerful words. Here we receive at the table, we receive and share God's grace. At the table we find and extend forgiveness. At the table we are blessed to be a blessing. At the table uh, we are diverse, though uni united. Here at the table, the poor will be served, the widows not forgotten, the imprisoned not forsaken. Here at the table, we love one another, even our enemies. Here at the table, all, all people come to know the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing, which we bless. The church gathers at this table as a family. We are the family of God. So if your heart is with my heart in love and in loyalty to Jesus Christ, then take my hand. Join me. We belong to the same parent. We live in the same household and we eat at the same table. As we begin this summer family reunion series, welcome, welcome to the family of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Hey friends, thanks again for watching this uh, online sermon here at First United Methodist Church. We've got big things happening this summer. Our, our youth and adults are leaving for Yom Army today, so keep them in your prayers as they travel, travel to Somerville, Texas, just outside of Brenham for a wonderful week of mission and opportunity to connect with each other, connect with the community, and, and share the love of Jesus. Uh, we have... Uh, as I mentioned in the intro to this video, uh, our summer family reunion sermon series. And so different speakers will be speaking throughout the summer. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Uh, we have summer camp coming up the first week of July. So keep those kids in your prayers as they prepare to go to Lakeview. And then the third week of uh, July, we have our vacation Bible school. So you're going to want uh, to register your kids, your grandkids for that, go to our church website, uh, find that link that says register for Vacation Bible School. Click on it. It'll take you to our registration page. Once again, thanks for watching. God bless.